What if you could gather the greatest minds on the planet and stick them in one room and you had them all working together in unison on whatever project you want? But here's the twist. Imagine that those are all AIs. A country of geniuses in a data center. That is Dario Amodi, the CEO of Anthropic's grand vision for where AI could go in the next five to 10 years. Dario downloaded a good chunk of his brain into this amazing essay that we're gonna go through in this video. Talk about the improvements he sees that could bring 50, to 100 years of research into the next five or 10. Before we start, you have to know a little bit about who Dario is. Dario is the CEO of Anthropic. That's the company that makes Claude, the AI chatbot, as well as does a lot of big cutting edge AI research. He was also a VP at OpenAI for a long time. Just before OpenAI started, um, that I met Ilya, one of the first things he said to me was, look, the models, they just want to learn. You have to understand this. The models, they just want to learn. You get the obstacles out of their way, right? You give them, you give them good data. You, you give them enough space to operate in. You don't do something stupid like condition them badly numerically. Um, and, and they want to learn. They'll do it. They'll do it. So he's somebody you should definitely be listening to. He's instrumental in shaping some of the most advanced AIs that we see today. So when somebody like this writes an essay like this, it's really important to think about what he's saying and listen closely. So this essay is really focused on the radical upside of AI. Dario himself specifically calls out the fact that he's done some work on the risk side and really wanted to make sure that people understood what's worth fighting for here. I mean, just a, a simple quote to start this off that really kind of shocked me was the fact that he thinks we can compress 50 to 100 years of biological research within the next five to 10 using these AI systems. At the same time, he does spend time talking about risks. This is Dario Modi after all, and wants to make sure that he understands that we can shape this future going forward. He focuses on five specific areas that he's very optimistic that AI is gonna have a massive impact on our lives in a good way. Those are biology and physical health, neurology and mental health, economic development and poverty, peace and governance, and then work and meaning. I mean, if you think those five things, that feels like a lot of the human experience. Okay, let's start with biology. So obviously biology is everything. I'm a person, I breathe, I have blood in my veins, all that stuff. And disease is a huge problem for humans. We've been fighting this uh, since the beginning of humanity. And Dario goes in to talk a little bit about the idea about how this could be the biggest change in what AI can provide. In the past, a lot of researchers and biologists thought of AI as a way to parse data, that that was the best thing it was gonna be used for, and it's been super useful for that so far, but he's saying that this is thinking a little too small. Like the rest of this essay, he talks about the transformative potential of AI to start thinking of it not just as a data sorter, but as something that could actually do the research on its own. He actually refers to it as a virtual biologist, so that again, you can send it out, it could do the research, and come back with stuff that could really surprise you. He talks about the fact that just a few discoveries in the biological realm have transformed that entire space from CRISPR to DNA sequencing, and what he says is that AIs will be able to help discover those things, the transformative things that will change the entire way we look at biology as a science. This is where the compressing 50 to 100 years of biological research within five to 10 comes from. Some of the things he talks about that could happen within this time span sound unbelievable, but listen to this. The elimination of most cancers through personalized treatments, curing genetic diseases, things like Alzheimer's, enhancing treatment of common ailments, things like diabetes, all the stuff that that kind of burdens down human beings as it is right now, and what he calls achieving biological freedom, which involves things like weight control or muscle gain. All this sort of stuff is within our grasp, and ultimately he thinks on a biological standpoint that we could double the human lifespan again to up to 150 years, which is pretty remarkable. If that all sounds unbelievable, I totally hear you, but that is what this is laying out, this kind of exponential growth in research. The section on a neuroscience in the brain is just as enlightening. It's pretty crazy to think already where we've gotten to in brain research, things like optogenetics, which allow lights to activate neurons, or expansion microscopy, which allows us to see the tiny sections of the brain in extreme detail. But he talks very specifically about how AI could accelerate neuroscience. Dario thinks that AI is gonna allow us to invent much more finely tuned drugs to help with brain chemistry. The data sets coming out of this are gonna be massive. AI can sort through them, help us figure that out. He also talks about the idea of precision neural interventions. It means that you can more specifically target specific neurons in the brain. 
And then obviously just the AI better understanding the human brain, it's pretty well known that we don't really know what goes on up here very well, but as AIs get more advanced, they're gonna get better and better at understanding how our neurons work. What this means for mental health to him is pretty remarkable. The idea that we might be able to cure mental illnesses, things like PTSD or schizophrenia, which up until now we've only been able to medicate. He thinks that with AI's help, we could start to understand the biological underpinnings of these diseases, advanced genetic screenings, which kind of sounds scary in my mind, this is controversial, but it could stop severe mental illnesses from developing. And of course, mood altering drugs. That's right, things like focus or ways to behave better, just be happier. These are the kind of things that AI is gonna develop. And whether or not that's a good thing for humanity, it's clear that we want to have better lives. And part of that is our mental health. I mean, it's not limitless, but there's a little bit of a promise of a pill that could make us all better humans in general. Economic development is a big part of this essay as well. And what he means by this is what good is it if we're able to make everybody healthier and make them live to 150 if we don't find a way to use AI to kind of lift up the rest of the world and make everybody's lives a little bit easier economically. That right now there's huge economic disparity and he points that out in this essay. Specifically, he points out the GDP per capita in sub-Saharan Africa is about $2,000 compared to about 75K in the US. And there's a great quote in here where he says, if AI further increases economic growth of quality and quality of life in the developed world while doing little to help with the developing world, we should view that as a terrible moral failure. This section talks a lot about the effect that eradicating diseases could have on the developing world as well as accelerating economic growth for these developing countries. But I think I wanna focus on two specific areas in this one. First of all, he talks about food security and what he refers to as the second green revolution. This is the idea that agriculture will continue to advance. If you're not familiar, there's been giant advancements in the last 10 years with agriculture. Starvation's not as big of a problem as it used to be, but he thinks that AI could improve things like crop genetics, fertilizers, and farming practices even further than we already have, as well as make much more efficient supply chains so that more people can get food faster. The other big part of this, and I think this is the thing that we've all been waiting for in some ways, and it's cool to see somebody like Dario shout this out, is mitigating climate change. Obviously, we're going through kind of a radical change in the environment that AI could provide solutions to climate change from carbon capturing techniques to things we may not have even thought about before. Again, this goes back to the idea of deploying a room full of geniuses at these large problems. I think the thing I often think about with a problem like climate change is that we are all sitting in the middle of it right now. And we don't see an end to it in sight. But again, if we have thousands, perhaps tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of incredibly smart AIs working on something where they can go away and come back in a bit with some ideas for us, that's a real advantage to us as a species to get better in that particular area. One thing in this particular section I found super interesting was he talks about the opt out problem. And in his mind, that's the idea that certain sections of humanity would opt out of these benefits that AI could provide. Obviously this would be a choice somebody would make or an entire country not wanting to lean into AI because of government principles or some sort of religious conversation. And that's a really important thing because there are these advantages that could move a giant chunk of humanity forward and some people might get left behind. But next we get to the section of the essay where Dario talks about governance and he's not nearly as uh, utopian or as optimistic here, but clearly the idea that he's backing is that AI could conceivably help democracies flourish in the world, but that there are still autocratic governments out there who could try to control AI and control the flow of information. In fact, he says, quote, unfortunately, I see no strong reason to believe AI will structurally advance democracy and peace. He does offer a few possible solutions here that the world's democracies should band together and control AI, control the supply chains, which is what you've already seen the US government trying to do with China and the Nvidia chips, as well as talking about the stick and the carrot method, which everybody knows is the idea that you have a punishment as well as a reward. And in this case, the punishment he's talking about is AI military tech, which if you've been following what Palmer Lucky and Andrew have been doing is pretty significantly moving forward as well. And Palmer Lucky himself has specifically said his goal is to make sure that the West and the US specifically has the best AI technology when it comes to the military. So this section is definitely a little less optimistic. Dario here is obviously struggling with some of his thoughts on this. I'm not entirely sure I buy that AI will help us become a better democracy or a better world from a peace standpoint, 
but I hope so. If we really do have a country of geniuses in a data center, I sure hope a lot of them believe that peace is the better solution for humanity and that we can avoid wars. But again, this section is a little bit tricky when you read through it. You get a sense that Dario really isn't convinced of his own arguments here, but he does think that AI could make democracies themselves better by fairer legal systems, easier public services, filing taxes, applying for benefits, all the sort of stuff that can sometimes be a nightmare in the governmental world. Another really good book to read if you're interested is Max Tegmark's Life 3.0, where he talks about a variety of different AGI or ASI resolutions. And a lot of what he talks about in that is different types of AI government, one of which is a really interesting idea, but also gives up a lot of our freedoms in that we basically turn over the entire government of the world to an AI and the world is much safer, everybody's much happier, but there are things like punishments that we wear around our wrist that if somebody misbehaves, they get a zap and things like that, which are really weird back and forth with the idea of how AI is gonna work to govern us or we work with AI to govern together. Okay, so finally Dario gets to the the heart of the human condition in all this, which basically asks the question is like, what do we do if AIs are gonna do all this work? And how do we make our lives better based on the fact that AIs are doing a lot of the stuff that we might have done before, that we might have challenged ourselves to do. And also now that we've got, you know, 75 more years of life. And this is a sticky question, and I really do appreciate how he approaches it. One of the things I love about this section is he talks about the fact that most people in the world are not the best at anything, and it doesn't seem to bother them particularly much. So to me, that's a really good example of showing how we do things as humans, not because we're the best, but because we enjoy striving for it. And that's a really important thing when it comes to the idea that AIs might be better at us than a lot of things going forward. People still play chess at a very high level, even though many, many years ago, AIs were able to beat every human being in chess. So that gets to the heart of what he talks about when it comes down to work and why people matter and what we get meaning out of. And of course, we talk a little bit about UBI here, universal basic income, and the idea of how we get people to be able to do the things they want to do in a world where AI is doing a lot of our work. And I think the conclusion here is really just kind of summing up this idea that this is a massive change that is coming. This is not the first one of these essays we've gotten. Obviously, Sam Altman recently wrote something similar to this, much shorter. But I also want to remind everybody out there that these are the people at these massive companies that are seeing not the version that we see right now, but the next version of this software. AI is moving much faster than we see right now. Yes, your people out there are going to tell you, you know, the Gary Marcuses of the world are going to tell you that AI has hit a stopping point, that this is a giant bubble, and it might be financially. But again, these people are giving us an early heads up as to what changes are coming down the pipeline. And to Dario's point, this in his mind is a five to 10 year process. So it is 2024 right now. Imagine 10 years from now in 2034 that everything I've talked about in this video is come to fruition. We are living in an entirely different world. Please go read this essay. I really encourage it. It's one of the smartest things I've read about at least an optimistic look at what AI could do for our world. I think Dario is doing really interesting work at Anthropic and Claude Opus 3.5 is likely coming in the next couple of weeks. That's the rumors out there. And you know, it's just gonna keep getting crazier. So the more that you can inform yourself about this stuff, the better.